Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. A few days ago, DJI released the fifth firmware update of their digital FPV transmission system. In addition to adding the GPS data to the custom OSD, which is crucial for long range flights, adding the HDMI out option, which unfortunately is only supported by the expensive DJI smart controller, and adding support for the new Cadix Nebula camera, which hasn't been announced yet, DJI optimized the display and operation of the AV interface, and today in this video, I'm going to test it out and check whether the issue which I've previously reported where the screen blacks out when the video signal gets low when using an external AV model has been resolved. In order to test it out, I'm going to use two DJI goggles and record their internal screens using two GoPro cameras. I'm also using two Immersion LC Rapid Fire models which are flashed with the same firmware and in order to make them work harder, I'm not using antennas. Now by the way, in addition to optimizing the AV interface, DJI also added the ability to zoom out to up to 50% of the screen size, and when you're zoomed out, you'll be able to move the screen around. Unfortunately, since we are facing a partial lockdown due to the COVID-19 situation, I wasn't able to reproduce the screen blackout issue by flying a quadcopter around like on my last video. However, I was able to reproduce it by just walking around in my apartment, and I'm glad to tell you that after spending the entire morning testing different models and different quadcopters, I have some pretty interesting and conclusive results. First, I tested both goggles when the camera was set to PAL and the DVR was recording. As you can see, when the signal got low, the screen on the previous version blacked out first, but you can also see that the screen on the current version blacked out as well. Then I tested the same setup when the DVR wasn't recording and I got similar results. And the good news are that when the camera was set to NTSC, the screen never blacked out, actually on both versions. Another thing that I noticed is when the camera was set to PAL and the screen blacked out, on the previous version, pretty much the entire DVR recording was corrupted. However, on the latest version, the DVR was saved until the point where the screen blacked out. I also decided to perform a latency test and according to my results, there isn't a significant difference between the previous version and the new one, and also between PAL and NTSC. So overall, my conclusion is pretty simple. If you can set your camera to NTSC, because currently PAL is not fully supported, maybe due to the higher bitrate, and hopefully DJI are going to figure it out soon, and the system is going to be fully compatible with both PAL and NTSC. And by the way, it will be nice if DJI will add an option to change between 4x3 and 16x9 aspect ratios, because as far as I can tell, when the camera is set to NTSC, the aspect ratio is 16x9, and when it is set to PAL, it is 4x3. That's going to be it for this pretty quick video. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.